Hello everybody, welcome to Mad Over MATLAB tutorials. This is Tanmay and this is the second part of a series of tutorials on graphics in MATLAB. And in this tutorial, we will continue with two dimensional plots that we began in the previous part. And today, we will see how to work with contour plots and implicit plots. So let us first see the definition of a contour plot. A contour plot of a function of two variables is a locus of points in the xy plane where the function assumes a constant value. And the examples are a circle and an ellipse. So let us see how to plot this contour. This is the equation of a circle which has the center at the origin and the radius is root a. So before going to the actual syntax of plotting this contour, we will first need to create a grid of points on which we will sketch this contour, this circle. So let us see how to do it. In this example, I intend to start my grid of points from minus 3 on the x-axis to plus 3 and minus 3 on the y-axis to plus 3 and each and every point will be at a distance of point 1 from its previous and next point. So on the left hand side I will write a matrix XY it has two matrices X and Y on the right hand side I will use the mesh grid keyword followed by parenthesis and the arguments to this function are two arrays. The first array will be assigned to X and the second array will be assigned to Y. So these points will act as the X coordinate of the grid which you want to make and these will serve as the y coordinates of the grid. After that we have to use the contour keyword followed by parenthesis then we need to give the x and the y arrays as the first and the second arguments followed by the function or the equation of the contour. So in this case it is x square plus y square and after that we should give the constant value that the function assumes which is this a in this case in this vector. Now the syntax of counter says that you cannot use or you cannot give a single argument here so even if you want to plot a single contour you will have to write this constant twice whichever constant lies on the right hand side. So when I say 1 comma 1 or 1 space 1 it means that my equation will be x square plus y square is equal to 1. So the radius of my circle will be 1 unit. So when I execute this command two arrays x and y have been created in the workspace. Let us see what these arrays contain. So as you can see here, the array x has numbers starting from minus 3 and they continue till plus 3 and the same numbers are repeated in every row. And if you see the y array, it has a kind of transposed appearance as compared to x array. Here, each column has the same numbers and the numbers start from minus 3 and end at plus 3. So when you combine these two arrays, if you will combine each and every element of x 
corresponding to each and every element of y. For example, if you combine element 1 of x with element 1 of y, you will get a point. So the first point that you get is minus 3 comma minus 3. After that you will get a point minus 2.9 comma minus 3. Then you will get a point minus 2.8 comma minus 3. So what I want to suggest from this is that you will get a set of points which will form a grid and your contour will be plotted using these points. Now let us write a command to plot the contour. So as you can see we have plotted a circle with radius is equal to 1 unit. Now let us see how to plot multiple curves or multiple contours. First you have to create a grid as in the previous case. After that you need to write this contour function and where you have written this in the previous case you have to write the constants of the curves that you want. So in the first case you only had one curve which had the constant 1 but now you need three different curves which are having constants as 1, 2 and 3. So we have already defined these x and y vectors so I won't write the command again. I will straight away write the contour function command. So now we have got three different contours. Let us see what radius they have. So the first or the innermost contour has a radius of 1 unit. The second contour has a radius of 1.414 approximately which corresponds to root 2 since we had given the argument there as 2. And the third contour has a radius of 1.732 approximately which corresponds to root 3 since we had given the argument as 3. Now if you don't wish to plot any specific number of contours you can just skip this argument from your contour function and limit your counter function to this. So as it can be seen here we have got concentric circles and they are not limited to any value they just go on increasing and if you increase these x and y axis limits you will get any number of circles you desire. Now after this let us see how to plot an implicit function. Now this is the example of an implicit function. This is a Lemniscate gate or an infinity symbol. And if you notice there is no constant present here. So how to use it in your contour function. First you need to rewrite the above equation in this form which means that you have to bring all the terms to one side and equate it to 0. After that you need to create a mesh grid as in the previous case. I have changed the limits in this case. I have reduced the step size or the gap between successive points to 0 0.01. Then I have used the counter function I have given the x and the y arrays as the input arguments followed by the rewritten equation of your function and in the end I have set this parameter to 0. Now if I don't set this parameter to 0 I will get more curves more counters around this Lemniscate. gate.
so we have got a lemni state here so that's it for this tutorial in the next part we will see how to work with field plots so till then goodbye and take care